All right. So I got home. I got an argument with my mom. She slapped me across the face. She began to hit me. She started beating me. I didn't like it. So I strangled her to death. What? Your right to live at all. Shall be executed in a method provided by Florida law. What? Yo. Yo. From just the previous alone, this is about to be a crazy episode, bro. These are some crazy kids, bro. All right, but my mom got me mad, so I strangled her to death. That's why, bro. Hold up. Let me put this back down. Let's just get into it. We're about to watch the craziest kids, killer kids, react to the death sentences. Let's just get into it, y'all. Also, I missed y'all. <laughs> Glad you guys are back. Let's go. But how does that compare to the violence 12 year old Morgan Geyser caused? Shout, 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 shout. Did you try to stab her before that? No. Did you just go to the park? Yes. This is Morgan Geyser, Jeez. a 12 year old from Waukesha, Wisconsin, 12? who's facing charges for the attempted murder of her then best friend, Peyton Lutner. On May 31st, 2014, in Waukesha, Wisconsin, Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire, both 12 years old, committed an unspeakable act that'll forever change their lives. They lured their friend, Peyton Lutner, into a forest and stabbed her 19 times. 19 this heinous act was done in an attempt to appease the fictional character, Slender Man. Who stabbed her first? Did they just say, did they just say Slender Man? They try to do it for a cartoon, like a, a fictional character? Oh, for the Lord of Slender Man, please accept this humble sacrifice. What? 12 year old kids, 19 times is wild, dumb, crazy. I think, um, when he stabbed her first and then I continued and like, she was like, Morgan, make sure she doesn't miss this game. She told me that she got her in the lung. Oh my goodness. Right here, six times, and then like in the leg a few times. So we told her we were gonna get help, but we really weren't. We were gonna run to let her Pass away. He's a 12, 12 years old. Ran. Remarkably, Lutner survived and was found on a road oh where God. she was rescued. He came upon a 12 year old female. She appears to be stabbed. She appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Correct. Sir, are you with her right now? Yes. Is she awake? She's awake. Is there any bleeding going on? Her clothing has got blood on it. Okay, and you found her and she was just laying there? Yes. Yeah. Despite oh God, being bro. arrested, Morgan Geyser was far from shaken by what just happened, as interrogation footage showed her singing and dancing shortly after being apprehended. She's a demon. Are you going to put me in prison and I'm gonna rot and die? Please don't cut off my head. What in the world? Geyser was later charged. Hold up, bro. This kid is a spawn of Satan himself. Hold on. Let's look at her face. Oh, you're dancing and singing after you try to kill somebody? Please don't chop my head off. Wild. 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 Attempted first degree homicide, as both she and Wire were tried as adults. With overwhelming evidence and horrific aftermath, Morgan Geyser's fate was all but sealed. She received a severe sentence. 40 years to life, a requirement for psychiatric treatment. Amen. While some see Morgan Geyser as an innocent victim of pop culture, how does it stack up against a pop road culture? rage incident that almost turned fatal? You freaking stupid! Huh? You freaking idiot! This is Brian Holmes, a fiery teen who's turning Florida's highways into a shooting range. One September morning, 18-year-old Brian Holmes from Florida was involved in a dangerous road rage incident on oh, State 415. Holmes, driving erratically and without headlights, rear-ended his soon-to-be victim's car. Detectives here in Volusia say using license plate reading technology from here in the area, they were able to catch the suspect, 18-year-old Brian Holmes, within 20 to 30 minutes of the shooting. They say they were able to then arrest him at his house. He then drove alongside her SUV opening fire and striking her vehicle seven times. Yo. Fortunately, the victim was unharmed. While Holmes admitted to firing at the victim's vehicle in an attempt to hit the tires, his victim painted a very different picture. I couldn't have cars going by, but that was them that was in front of me. Then they kind of like moved to the, le the right lane. And when I passed the first party, shooting. Volusia County Sheriff's Dang, deputies bro. rapidly apprehended Holmes using license plate reader technology. During the arrest, a handgun fell from his waistline, contradicting his initial claim okay. of being unarmed. He did. About the car. Okay, you don't have a gun or anything on you, right, man? 
All right, step away from the car. No. Step away from the car. Step away. Stop. Gun drop. Stop. Stay there. Bro, hold up, bro. Hold up, hold up, hold up. He was going to shoot the police, bro. He was about to shoot him. That's why he was trying to waste his time to get the gun out. And blah, 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 blah. Bro, he was about to shoot these cops. Yo, this guy's a menace. Send him to jail. I ain't got no gun on me. Ryan Holmes was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, discharging a firearm from a vehicle, shooting into an occupied vehicle, and possession of a concealed weapon used in the commission of a felony by a person under 24. Ryan Holmes's case was born out of a moment of madness. How does it compare with an 11 year old preparing to bring death to his schoolmates? <laughs> This is Quincy what? Tuttle, an 11-year-old who was about to settle a school squabble with summary executions of his schoolmates. Tuttle brought a 22 caliber handgun Yo. and over 400 rounds of ammunition to school, along with several knives. His alarming arsenal was discovered after his mother alerted the school about missing kitchen knives. This kid had a whole plan to wax the school, bro. 400 rounds of ammunition, nobody was surviving that. And then he has the audacity to walk. The cops let this man walk away like nothing happened. <sighs> Yo. Yo, oh my God. Knives leading to his arrest in a two hour lockdown at the school. Um, prosecutors say a 22 caliber semi automatic handgun was semi automatic found and bro. two loaded magazines. Tuttle faced serious charges, including attempted assault, unlawful possession of a firearm, and possession of a weapon at school. As the trial proceeded, a dark side of this 11 year old emerged. Trying to act tough? Quincy Tuttle was sentenced to two years in a juvenile detention facility for his actions. He pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree attempted assault, theft of a firearm, second-degree unlawful possession of a firearm, and possessing a dangerous weapon on school facilities. While Quincy Tuttle... Two years? He's only getting two years? Son, two years is... He had a whole plan, knives and guns, bro. That's not two years, bro. And he's trying to walk away from the cops. You can tell this is a bad kid. He should be there until he's at least 18 years old. I, I give him 10 years. Like, what? He's 12... Six years in juvie and two years in the max prison, but this kid should not be let free. He's a demon. Tuttle's two school years. crime might have a chivalrous beginning in trying to defend his friend. Our next case has another kid killing his mom over bad grades. Oh my All god. All right, so I got home. I got an argument with my mom. She slapped me across the face. She began to hit me. She started beating me. I didn't like it, so I strangled her to death. This is Gregory Yo. Ramos teen who killed his own mother in cold blood. In DeBerry, Florida, a chilling event unfolded on November 2nd, 2018. Gregory Logan Ramos, then 15, strangled his mother, Gail Elaine Clevenger, following an argument over a bad grade. Emerging facts horrified the nation about this case, as the victim was buried beneath the church's fire pit, Yo. the scene cleaned to perfection. Ramos's meticulous planning and execution of the crime were shocking, particularly given his age, and the calculated nature of his actions. She slapped me across the face. She began to hit me. She started beating me. I didn't like it, so I strangled her to death. I Jeez. put her in a wheelbarrow. I put her in my car. I took the car. I had a mental breakdown where I was committed three times. I drove back to the church. I began to dig a hole. I dig a hole right under the fire pit. I dug a pretty deep hole, pretty deep, you know, deep enough to put a body in, all right? All the stones were arranged. It was a fire pit. And this is where him and his friends would always come. We did a cursory search. Unfortunately, her foot was protruding after digging down maybe eight or ten inches. That's not really a big place to where he put his mom. The charges came in hard. First-degree murder, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with evidence. Ramos pleaded guilty as his friends Dylan Keglarek and Brian Porras were also charged as accessories for helping to cover up the crime. Hey, bro. I'm not going to lie. His friends... I yeah, his best of is going to be a, his friends are real ones for being with him, even though what he did was like completely 100% wrong. 100% wrong, but those are, I'm not saying, bro, that's tough, bro. I, those are, <laughs> I just got home and that, that, my house 
is completely trashed. It looks like someone broke in the side door. With compelling victim statements, overwhelming evidence, and the cold calculations in the execution of the crime, the verdict was never in doubt. Gregory Ramos was sentenced to 45 years in prison. The sentence for count one is 45 years in the custody of the Florida Department of Corrections, followed by lifetime probation. Probation will have the standard conditions <laughs> with the special condition of a mental health evaluation. Murders in the family like the case of Gregory Ramos go deep, but how does it compare to Austin Myers, who brutally murdered his schoolmate? Austin Meyer Wiener. If you kill me, it won't fix anything. It won't bring Justin back. It's only gonna hurt more innocent people. This is Austin Myers of Ohio an amateur robber and convicted schoolmate killer. Austin Myers, alongside Timothy E. Mosley, was involved oh, we in did this before. 18 year old Justin Mack in Waynesville, Ohio, on January 28, 2014. This one Myers, before. who knew his victims from middle school, planned the crime meticulously, seeking to rob Back's stepfather's safe. Strangling them, that way it would create no mess, uh, pretty much be an easier job to handle. Uh, obviously, Justin was trying to put up a fight and he wasn't overpowering us. The plan tragically escalated as Myers and Mosley fatally stabbed and strangled back. Prosecutors say Myers and co-defendant Tim Mosley hatched a plan to burglarize and kill Justin, then carried it out inside the Navy recruit's home in Wayne Township. They choked him, stabbed him 21 times, dumped his body in Preble County. 21 is crazy. And then Do you know how insane you have to be to stab to even punch your someone 21 times, you're like, uh, bro, that's, I don't, that was only five. You do it 21, five times more. Bro, people are sick. Two rounds into it. As the trial began, Myers faced several charges, including first degree murder. He was accused of orchestrating the crime, despite Mosley being the one who did the fatal stabbings. Mosley and Myers are each charged with aggravated murder and the death of 18-year-old Justin Back. Testimony revealed Myers as the crime's mastermind, including efforts to acquire chemicals for body decomposition and firing twice at the body post-mortem. In an emotional statement, Justin Back's family expressed how crushing the whole incident has been on them. Austin could have stopped it, but tells Justin, it's okay, it's almost over. That's sick. You could have changed your mind many times, but you didn't especially when Justin was begging for his life. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you how much I hate you. That is without question. I would just hope that every time you close your eyes at night, you see my, just, my son Justin. No, I've made a horrible mistake. Uh, I'm only 19 years old. I, I think there's a lot of good things I can do with my life if you allow me to keep my life. Austin Myers was sentenced to death becoming the youngest Ooh. inmate on death row in Ohio at the time. The defendant does not understand how precious life is. The court yes. finds that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstance outweighs the mitigating factor. Therefore, the sentence of death shall be imposed upon oh Austin Gregory Myers on the charge of aggravated murder. Bringing a close to the terrible episode. Deserved. As Austin Myers' future killing plans were stopped in their tracks, was no such luck in our next case, where Marlon Joseph killed his mother's girlfriend and her young daughter. Meet Marlon Joseph. You look crazy. controlled rage escalated an everyday kid's dispute to a full-blown double homicide. Marlon Joseph, residing in West Palm Beach with his extended family, was embroiled in a fatal altercation with a neighbor on December 28, 2017. A quarrel with Marlon's daughter and that of Kalata Crowell, Kyra, culminated in the brutal execution of both mother and daughter. Oh my God. I heard the shots. I was just getting home. Me and my wife were just coming home. We heard the shots. And you saw Kyra out I there. saw that little girl laying out there, yes. Joseph oh. faced first degree murder charges with mounting evidence and eyewitness accounts against him. Prior convictions did not help his case either. On February 26, 2020, his fate was sealed. Joseph received a death sentence, which marked the Amen. first such sentence in Palm Beach County since mother 2002. The jury found the murders particularly heinous and premeditated, noting Kyra's age as an aggravating factor. A jury has recommended 28-year-old Marlon Joseph be sentenced to death. Now, this is the Cross moment Joseph will learn his fate. Marlon Maurice Joseph, you have not only forfeited your right to live among us, but under this law of the state of Florida, you have forfeited your right to live at all. Sorry, I'm Accordingly, it is hereby ordered and adjudged that as to count one, for the first degree murder of Kalar Crowell, Marlon Maurice Joseph shall be delivered into the custody of the Florida Department of Corrections 
at the Florida State Prison. You shall be confined there until a date certain selected by the governor of the state of Florida, and on that date, you shall be executed in a method provided by Florida law. Getting heated with your neighbors Ooh. can lead to life-changing, terrible decisions. But how does it compare to Mackenzie Sherilla's jealous love turning into a double murder situation? This is Mackenzie Shirillo, an aspiring teenage model whose suicide attempt left her in a double murder trial. Model. Model my butt, but shut up. In Ohio, a devastating crash claimed the lives of two young and left her in a double murder trial. In Ohio, a devastating crash claimed the lives of two young individuals. Mackenzie Shirilla, driving at a harrowing 100 miles per hour, Sheesh. crashed her Toyota Camry straight into a brick building without braking. <laughs> How did she survive that, bro? 102 miles into a brick building you survive is crazy to me. Dominic Rousseau, 20, and Davian Flanagan, 19. Mackenzie's unfortunate passengers were pronounced dead at the scene. It was soon discovered that Miss Shirilla's motive was to end it all after her once sweet relationship with Dominic had gone stale after a few weeks. As the trial a few began, weeks? Shirilla faced mounting evidence from the prosecution of the cold, premeditative nature of her crime, attempting a half-successful murder-suicide with her boyfriend and his friend. Kenzie's statement in the hospital to Detective Azu, can't you just take my license away for 10 years or something? That statement is Mackenzie's, that statement is Mackenzie Shirillo. The most selfish person I know, ironically, Dom was the most selfless person I know. Mackenzie Shirilla murdered Dom and Davion in cold blood and had already moved on. Kenzie killed Dom over the thought of losing him and she made Davion collateral damage. We have to realize that we lost two people right now were lost for a three week old relationship. Someone who couldn't control the mental state enough to be broken up with, are you gonna kill? The worst part is Davion in the back seat had nothing to do with this. He gets there like, hey man, I mean, I'm just here for the ride. Now he's dead, bro. And she has this like, audacity to say, 10, you might as well 10 years. Bro, you just killed two people trying to kill all y'all. Bro, that is selfish, bro. That is, oh my God, how crazy do you have to be? She was driving, going to concerts, and dressing up for Halloween. No thoughts of the families and lives that she had destroyed. On the other hand, Mackenzie's mother got the chance to address the court. My name is Natalie Shirilla. Um, I just want to say, am I allowed to address them? So in the hospital, that vitality post, I commented on that because somebody had called her a murderer, okay? And she would, she's not a murderer. After what seems to be a series of court dramas, the jury and the presiding judge had heard enough. Now, it is time for Mackenzie to learn her fate. Court renders the following verdicts. Count one. The court, having had count one tried to a pursuant to waiver, finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Dominic Russo in violation of Harry Vice Code section 2903.02a is charged in count one. You look at your modeling career. Count two. The court, having had count two tried to a pursuant to waiver, finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Davion Flanagan in violation of Harry Vice Code section. 2903.02A As a jealous fit changes Mackenzie's life forever. How does her case compare to Fernicia Torres's murder trial following oh, she the crazy. mugging? This is Fernicia Torres, con artist and casual robber who murdered an unsuspecting fake intimacy victim. You have three warrants for armed robbery and one warrant for felony murder. Three. In Suwanee, Georgia, a sinister plan unfolded as Fernicia Torres, along with accomplices Nicholas Evans and Khalil Miller, lured William Tonchez in the guise of a sexual hookup. Unknown to Tonchez, he was walking into a trap where Fernicia, who lured him with intimate advances, had planned to rob him of his wallet, helped by her accomplices. Gwinnett County Police say the three teens had Going to kill somebody over a wallet? It's crazy. And those crimes led police to charge the teens with attacking and killing Tonchez. The discovery of Tunchez's body the following day by children playing in the neighborhood spurred law enforcement into action. Soon, Fernicia and her co-conspirators were apprehended to face their day in court. 
The legal repercussions were swift. Torres, Evans, and Miller faced charges including felony murder and armed robbery. As the charges were read, Vernicia showed what seemed to be genuine shock at the charges against them, setting the stage for a dramatic so trial. Three and one warrant for felony murder. Because of those because of those warrants, those are the charges that are pending right now. Bernicia and her gang were sentenced to life in prison without parole, bringing an end to their young criminal careers. As Fernicia and her crew continue to face the wrath of justice, we go back to school, where Willard Miller is about to end the life of his Spanish teacher. Was she murdered for giving a student a bad grade? That's the chilling new claim by prosecutors in the slaying of a beloved high school Spanish teacher. Meet Willard Miller a high schooler who killed his teacher over bad grades. Unspeakable. That's the word one school official is using to describe the murder of a beloved high school teacher. Her body, with severe trauma to the head, was found hidden in a local park. And now two 16-year-old students have been charged as adults in her killing. A high school student, Willard Miller, stands accused of brutally killing his teacher over bad grades in an act that stunned the community. Miller took the shocking decision of beating a beloved Spanish teacher with a bat until she stopped moving. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. 66 year old Noema Graber was found beaten to death in a park where she regularly went for walks after school. Miller and accomplice Jeremy Goodale, tried as adults, faced first degree murder charges. Goodale soon came clean, cooperating with prosecutors to get a lighter sentence. I offer my sincerest apologies to the Graber family. But I know my words will never be enough. I've had time to think on what to say, and I'm sorry. Truly sorry. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Mm. Crocodile tears. Yeah, those are those are crocodile tears, bro. It's, come on, bro. <laughs> you don't care. You only care you're going to jail, my boy. You don't care, bro. And what are you supposed to do as a friend when you find out that your friend killed somebody, bro? You, you have to snitch. You don't have to like, it's, yeah, I ain't going to tell. I ain't going to tell nobody. We, we boys. I ain't going to tell. As soon as you're free, call the police, bro. <laughs> you have to snitch. You can't be friends with a killer unless you're going to be stuck here too, my boy. Come on. To Mrs. Graber's friends and the members of her church, oh. I'm truly sorry for what I've taken from you. The gruesome details of how the murder went down were detailed by Goodale. On November 2nd of 2021, I met um, Willard Miller at Chautauqua Park. I understood that he had the intent to kill Mrs. Graber. Chayden had brought um, a bat, among other supplies, to go through with the murder. And after he had struck Nohima Graber, um, we then moved her off of the trail. Um, where I then struck her, and she died as a result. Afterwards, we removed any evidence that we could, and that was my recollection of the events on November 2nd. During Meyer's trial, the victim's son poignantly testified, honoring his mother's legacy. I forgive them and feel sorry that they had that anger in their hearts. There's no point in being angry at them. My mother was an angel of a woman and was one of the kindest souls. Faced with compelling evidence and heartbreaking victim testimonies from family and school community members remembering the departed teacher, the verdict was never in doubt. The court finds, based on the nature and circumstances of this offense, along with the required 25 factors that I am to consider in sentencing a juvenile in the state of Iowa for murder in the first degree, that the defendant, Willard Noble Chayden Miller, should be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 35 years. This sentence is permissible under the Iowa law. A 35-year mandatory minimum is not cruel and unusual punishment for the defendant as it represents the appropriate time of incarceration for the defendant and Mr. Goodell's premeditated 35 murder. years, wow. 35, these, it's weird to believe like these stories are real sometimes because like, 
over a bad grade, bro. Everybody gets bad grades, my boy. Come on, look at me. I got a lot of bad grades when I was a kid. Uh, a lot of these, like, I just can't imagine. I just can't. I would never do it. Like, that's that's personally me. But these crazy stories are crazy. And then as a friend, you, you're you helping cover your, your friend's deals as well. Like, come on, bro. Get the... I don't know, y'all. Let me know which story you think was the worst. Personally, for me, all of these were bad, bro. I just, I, all of these were bad. But let me know which one you think was worst. Also, I know I've been away for a while, but I'm glad I'm back. Now you guys are watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. And all, you know what I want to say? Smile and be strong, y'all. See you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.